Hello, welcome to this video where we look at the velocity problem and we tie it to the tangent problem that was in the previous video. My name is Nakai Rimmer, helping you through this calculus journey. Uh, let's get started. So you're, you're on a road trip and you look over at the mile mark on the side of the road and it says you're at mile 110. You have to notice the time and it's 7 o'clock. Later on, you look over again and all of a sudden you're at mile 160 and you look at the clock and 40 minutes have passed it is 740 the question is what is your average rate of speed over that time interval so it's velocity is going to be the word we use so that was a 40 minute time window and we are looking for your average rate of speed your average velocity over that time interval. So how are we going to do that? Well, what is the calculation? What does that mean, average velocity? It means that you divide the change in position by the change in time. And so we have the positions, we have the times, we have what we need to calculate this number and be able to interpret it. So um, the units that we're interested in are miles per hour. But the time unit is minutes, 40 minutes. So we have to reconcile that. Basically, we have to convert those 40 minutes into a fraction of an hour. So let's plot them. As, like, just think of them as two different points. We have the point 0, 1, 10. When time equals 0, you're at position 1, 10. When time equals two thirds, that's the fraction of an hour that 40 minutes is, you're at mile marker 160. What are you going to do? You're going to subtract 160 minus 110. That's going to be your numerator. And you're going to subtract two thirds minus zero, and that's going to be your denominator. And that will be your average velocity. So 50 over two thirds ends up being 75 miles per hour. That's what you averaged over that 40 minute time window. Maybe the driver was on cruise control and maybe it was actually stuck at 75 miles per hour the whole time, Un unlikely. Probably had to brake, probably had to change lanes. Maybe sped up past that, maybe went lower than that. Maybe there was, you know, but on average over that time interval, he went 75 miles per hour. Now, this is reminiscent of what we just did in the previous video with the trying to find the slope of the tangent line and using slopes of secant lines. We did exactly this kind of calculation. We, we found the slope connecting two points. And so the average velocity, 75 miles per hour, but what about like somewhere in between there, like at exactly 730? How fast were you going? We don't know that, okay? We might be able to, you know, we didn't look at the speedometer at that time. We don't know the exact speed, the exact velocity you were traveling at at 730. Um, that velocity isn't the average velocity. That velocity is called instantaneous velocity. At that instant, how fast were you going, okay? But these are tied to what we did before. The instant velocity, instantaneous velocity that's the tangent line slope. That's what we're interested in. The average velocity is an approximation to that. I mean, maybe you were going 75 miles per hour at 730. Possibly. There's no guarantee, though. It's an approximation to that. Just like the secant line was an approximation to the tangent line. The slope of the secant line is an average velocity, while the slope of the tangent line is an instantaneous velocity. Okay, we still don't know why we care about this tangent line slope. It's coming, I promise. I'm not holding it back from you. Uh, I can tell you now, but why spoil it? <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, it's the underpinnings of calculus. We're looking at the um, measuring the rate of change of a function, and, and uh, it's tied into the tangent line slope. All right, now the data that we just found was, you know, just by, you know, being in that real life situation. Um, here's another. Maybe. Maybe it's, um, maybe it's not a car, maybe it's a bike. 
So you have a bicycle and uh, somehow you're able to measure in one second intervals exactly how far you, and we're gonna change up the units, let's go metric. So we have meters per second. So you start off at a home position of zero at time zero. And somehow you're able to measure one second later and you have traveled 1.4 meters. Two seconds later, you've traveled 5.1 and so on. That's what the chart is, okay, great. So we're gonna look at the average velocity of the cyclist over these time intervals from one to three. It is just u subtracting y's in the numerator, subtracting x's in the denominator. Same thing, right? So uh, 10.7 minus 1.4 is 9.3. And if you cut that in half, what you end up with is 4.65 units, meters per second. Over that time interval, it was a two second interval, but over that time interval, you were traveling on average 4.65 meters per second. All right, great. How about the time interval from two to three? So for one to three, that's a you know a time interval of, of, of two seconds in length. Now let's come in closer. So from two to three, we have um, the difference there. 10.7 minus 5.1 is, is 5.6 meters per second. All right, great. So it's faster than the previous one. That, 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 that second part of that two second interval, you were going at a faster rate. Uh, let's move on the other side of three. Let's go from three to five, two second interval. Uh, so 25.8 minus 10.7 is 15.1. Cut that in half, you end up at 7.55. So over that two second interval, you were going even faster. Let's close in and look at the one second interval after three. From three to four, 17.7 minus 10.7 is just a seven. All right, what do we need to gather from all of this? Uh, the question that we're interested in is how fast were you going at the three second time spot? At that time, when you're at t equals three, how fast were you going? And all we have is this, this data here. So what are we going to do? Well, we want to be able to estimate this. So we could use these two second intervals from one to three and from three to five. But as we found, the closer the interval, the better the approximation. So we have this data that will give us one second intervals. So we can go from two to three and from three to four, we'll use this, this right hand, uh, these right hand calculations here. Um, in, the, in the one second before, um, t equals three, you were traveling on average 5.6 miles uh, meters per second. In the one second after um, t equals three, you were traveling on average seven meters per second. Now this is, this is you know, but you, you have to work with what you have and this is not ideal, but here's what you would do. Um, we, we see that we were, uh, traveling 5.6 and then we travel seven. So somewhere in between there should be our answer. Now this is, this is terrible what we're about to do, but this is the situation that we're faced with. We're gonna take the average, okay? And so average between seven and 5.6 is 6.3. It's a terrible guess. We have, we have data. I mean, this is, what we, this is what we can do with this data. You know, uh, we don't have a function and we can't, we can't do the same kind of thing we did back in the other video. Um, and so this is it. You can use this as your guess. Um, generally, you don't want to take an average of averages, okay? But um, when faced with this situation, this is the best you can hope for. And so um, if you want better approximation, you need a finer interval, a finer discretation. So this is um, one second intervals, well, maybe half second intervals or one tenth of a second interval just as we saw with the other function where um, in the other video we had x over x plus one, the shorter the interval, the better the approximation is. We are trying to approximate the instantaneous velocity at t equals three, and we're using average velocities for the one second before and the one second after. We're using secant line slopes to help us approximate the tangent line slope. All right, great. Thank you for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. In the next video, we will introduce limits. 
and we will look at the notation and, and look at what you're doing, how it works. We'll have some videos inside of this video and, uh, and um, hopefully it'll be helpful. Um, please like and subscribe, comment down below and uh, reach out to me if you need any help. Um, see you in the next video.